All right, well, welcome to the colloquium today. I am not on hell. I guess that was not obvious. Angel is going to introduce uh, Victor today. He is not feeling well today, so he did us the favor of staying at home and doing his introduction remotely. We'll turn off this light so we get better contrast, and then we will hear the intro from Angel. Hello, everybody. It is a great pleasure to introduce today's speaker, speaker Victor Raul Chavez Maita. Uh, so, Victor has one of the most interesting chronicle stories, and I'm going to try my very best to summarize it uh, as succinctly as possible today. So, Victor is originally from the town of Caima, Peru, which is roughly six hours from Lima. Uh, since he was very young, Victor showed a lot of interest in STEM, uh, things that were not especially taught in his town, uh, his hometown. So at a pretty young age, uh, Victor left Tyra to receive his education at Lima. Um, and there he went from being the bottom of his class to the top of his class at the time of graduation. After that, Victor went to obtain a bachelor's degree in agriculture engineering from the Universidad Agraria de la Molina in Lima. Um, after that, he realized that atmospheric science was his passion, where, and so he returned to school to take in atmospheric sciences and did voluntary research at the Instituto Geofísico del Peru for a year. And then after that, Victor learned to uh, read and talk Portuguese in preparation for a graduate school, uh, which he would uh, take at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. There he finished his PhD in 2019, uh, receiving the award for the best thesis from his department. And it was at about that time that, uh, that I gave a postdoc offer to Victor. Uh, in fact, I had an idea of us knew that this would end up being the, the ending of a long journey. Um, initially, he couldn't come to start his postdoc with me. Back then, I was at the University of Michigan because he had an embargo for his visa. And later on, the COVID-19 pandemic started, which made travel to the U.S. nearly impossible. Um, however, we were still able to just put him on an hourly appointment so he could have some income at the time. Uh, however, um, he, back then, he was uh, studying and working in Brazil, uh, and because it was so difficult to get him from Brazil to the U.S., he convinced him to return to Peru so he could come to the U.S. after that. But then he flew out of Sao Paulo on the plane, and then when he arrived in Peru, he uh, tested positive for COVID-19 and the quarantine, and then the pandemic forces, and he couldn't get here until November of uh, 2020. Uh, roughly uh, 18 months after his initial uh, offer to start a postdoc. Um, unfortunately, uh, because of that, uh, we've got a lot of setbacks, but in spite of all this, we have been able to write a lot of papers together, a testament of just group pictures, creative and talent. And today, uh, we'll talk about the latest of these papers, which was recently published in URL. So without any further ado, uh, take it away, Victor. So thank you so much, Angel, for the presentation. And for me, it's a great pleasure to be here and for and present in front of great professor and colleagues and science. Okay, so uh, today we talk about a little bit uh, with my recent work in how the ways we're propagating moisture mode over in the tropical western hemisphere. So this work is created by Professor Angel Adames and Pia Sackett from the University of California. All right, so I'm going to start off showing this animation of British temperature measure from satellite. Uh, when you first look at this animation, you probably see a lot of cubic system which is propagating well, which were over time, well, it's not clear. And there are other many other cubic system which is propagating is war over time. So the organization of this cubic system, as you're probably thinking about, are apparently chaotic, but I'm trying to argue that this convective system as for very clearly were organizing basically over the tropical region. So to an easy see an easy way to see what's going on over the tropical region is in fact to super, superimpose the curves which correspond to 
some requirement ways. For instance, this is the space-time spectrum, or the so-called uh, Wheeler and Pilates diagram. Well, in this diagram, you can plot a uh, well observed variability, well, in this case, also Brennan's temperature, as a function of the solar wave number and frequency. So, for instance, in this diagram, in this part is located the wave which propagate eastward, such as the Kelvin wave and the Marie-Julian oscillation. And in this part of the diagram are disturbances which propagate westward over time, such as the Rossby wave and the westward inertial gravity wave. So, obviously, you can extract the well the signature associated with these disturbances, and you can plot here in the animation. Yeah, for instance, you can see here that a large portion of the uh, well the convective system. In this case, it's fairly well organized in this large scale disturbance small Julian oscillation, which is propagating well eastward over time. Okay, so obviously during its propagation, these large scale disturbances impact precipitation not only over the tropical region, but also high latitudes by the tropical and subtropical teleconnection. So the, the, the other very important disturbances over the tropical region is in fact uh, the Kelvin wave. So, in this diagram, it's represented in red curves. You can see here, for instance, well, it's much smaller compared to the Marie Julian oscillation, but you can see that also the nice convection uh, propagates faster compared to the Marie Julian uh, oscillation. A large portion of this convective system is also organized, in this case, by the equatorial Rossby wave. Okay, so if we focus in the transition at time scale, in fact, it's well known that the Mali Julian oscillation is by far the dominant mode. Basically, over the Indo Pacific, well, Indo Pacific warm pool region. However, recent works, for instance, Gonzalez and Jen, uh, also demonstrated that these interseasonal westward propagating modes, well, as observed here, uh, over this region also explain a large portion of the interseasonal variability. However, also the author demonstrated that this uh, well equatorial Ross we waves over this region is strongly modulated by uh, by the internal variability, or in other ways, is uh, show more activity during during the El Niño or La Niña years. So the big question here is what happened outside the, the Warpool region? So to answer this question, uh, here we make a time longitude diagram, in this case of the of the future clouds range temperature. In this case we average from 10 south to 10 north. In other words, this is a, a global view of what's going on over the tropical region. As expected, over the eastern hemisphere, well, the eastward propagating mode associated with this Mali Julian oscillation is in fact the dominant mode. But if we go to the to the western hemisphere, you can see that well, a large portion of this interseasonal variability in fact is associated with the body Julian oscillation. But a larger portion of this interseasonal variability also can be created by this interseasonal westward propagating mode. This is clearly observed when we compute the, the regional space space time spectrum. Well. This is computed for this domain, and here I'm showing this uh, well, this diagram, where in fact we observe the spectral peaks mainly in the Kelvin waves. Obviously, there are many works which demonstrated that this Kelvin wave, in fact, uh, organized convection and is very important over this region. And if we focus in the two time scale, and in this in the bottom part of this diagram, you can see a strong signature, which is associated with this interseasonal westward propagating mode. All right, so probably uh, the first question uh, could be raised here, if, if, the, if there is a theoretical framework for understanding well, how convection is organized over the tropical region. So, and of course there is, and this theory is called the dry shallow water theory from Matsuno 1966. This is a this is a wonderful theory that actually preceded the observation of kind of part. So Matsuno predicted that these waves, for instance, Rossby wave, Kelvin wave, and inertial gravity wave, should exist in the atmosphere and over the ocean using this relatively simple system. 
And of course, if you compare the structure of the observer structure, for instance, of the Kelvin wave, you will see that closely resembles to what was predicted from the theory of Matsun. However, uh, this theory is not perfect. There are some limitations. For instance, we want to explain convective couple uh, quadrant waves. Because these convective couple waves are usually viewed as an extension of the dry waves with a reduced equivalent depth to represent convection. Obviously, uh, uh, well, a clear example of this disadvantage in fact represent the Martin Julian oscillation. By the way, the Martin Julian oscillation doesn't correspond to any Matsuno solution. The same occurs for uh, the interstitial westward westward propagating mode. You can see, well, here in this, in this space-time spectrum, uh, we also superpose the theoretical uh, well, dispersion curve from different uh, equivalent depths. If you consider only these equivalent depths, you can see that a lot of information associated with these disturbances is in fact well visible. Uh, well, in the real atmosphere, of course, there is a complex interaction between moisture, convection, radiation, and circulation, which is important for the slow propagating waves. And in fact, uh, the dry shallow theory doesn't account for this complex interaction. For instance, here, this is a more uh, realistic dispersion curve from the convective couple equatorial waves. For instance, if we focus here in the Martin Julian oscillation, and you consider, for instance, moisture as a prognostic equation, you will obtain a dispersion curve which, in fact, match pretty well with the observed spectrum peaks for the Martin Julian oscillation. So, well, the title of my topic well involves a westward propagation mode, and we basically define this mode as follows. First of all, we apply a filter first in the space, a FFT in the space to retain only negative wave number, and then we apply an FFT in the time domain to retain periods between 10 to 1960 days. And then we apply the UF analysis, basically to this filter, uh, filter pressure temperature, and the time series of the dominant mode, the first and second mode, we use it to define this interstitial western propagating mode, or what we call it the Rossby like mode. And this is the horizontal structure of this interstitial westward propagating mode over the western, over the western hemisphere. So this is for, for 10 days lax. Uh, well, in this plot, the shading represents a, a British temperature anomalies. Blue means enhanced convection, and dark yellow means uh, suppressed convection. The contour represents the upper level strength function, and the uh, winds are plotted with vectors. Uh, first of all, you can see here that, well, there is a slow whisper propagation of the convection associated with these disturbances. In fact, it takes about, well, 10 days well, to propagate from the Atlantic region to the, well, the Central America. This is a very low phase speed propagation for these disturbances. Well, if you focus now in the, well, in the circulation, you can see, well, these dryers, well, which characterize these disturbances. Well, here we basically have anticyclonic gyres behind the convection and cyclonic gyres ahead of the convection. By the way, this, this uh, well circulation pattern, these gyres, uh, is uh, closer to resemble to what was expected from the theory. Okay, so as I, as I said previously, this wave propagates pretty slowly over this region. We calculate the phase speed of about uh, 5 meters per second by using this rapid transport method. In fact, uh, if we want to understand the slow propagating only, by the dry shallow theory, in fact, will be almost impossible. All right, so, so our first task in this work uh, was mainly uh, to answer the following question. If interstitial westward propagating wave is or not a moisture model. In this case, we've developed uh, different criteria basically to identify moisture modes, which we, 
uh, well, could be applied for a different well, disturbances over the tropical region. Okay, so, well, many previous works, in fact, have been proposed that the flow propagation disturbances, in fact, should have characteristic of a moisture mode. However, this, these works have been focused in the modern union observation. This is one reason uh, we are, uh, we are in this case, um, studying other disturbances aside the modern union oscillation. And this, well, this works also mentioned that if moisture mode exists, they preferentially occur over the warm current region due to the high column uh, water vapor contained over this region. And this is uh, a second reason why we are looking for moisture modes of time than warm water region. Okay, this is a very schematic depiction where, which comes from Adam et al. 2019, where the authors classified the different uh, disturbances in two main groups, the waves which have characteristic of moisture modes, and the waves which have characteristic of gravity waves. For instance, here the authors propose that the Madi Julian is in fact uh, should have characteristic of uh, moisture modes, and the Rossby wave also should be classified as a moisture mode. So, following, uh, well, based on those two works, mainly in the Adams et al. 2019 and Adam 2021, we propose uh, three criteria to identify moisture mode in observation, because basically these two works develop with a theoretical approach to identify moisture modes. Okay, these are the criteria to identify moisture modes. All the first criteria is uh, that moisture must exhibit a high coherence with precipitation anomalies. And the second criteria is uh, that mode must be obeyed with temperature gradient balance. And the third criteria is uh, that thermodynamic variation in the mode must be dominated by moisture. Okay, let's go to explain in detail how exactly this criteria work. Okay, the first criteria is that the moisture anomalies must exhibit a high coherence with precipitation anomalies. So this criteria is pretty easy to be tested. Well, in this case, we apply this criteria by constructing this scatter plot. In the x-axis is the precipitation anomalies associated with these disturbances, and in the y-axis is the cold integrated moisture associated with these disturbances. As you can see here from this scatter plot, there is a strong correlation between, uh, well, between precipitation and moisture anomalies, which means that, well, anomalies in moisture is in fact associated with anomalies in precipitation. So we can say that our, well, uh, our students in fact satisfy this first criteria. All right, the second criteria says, to be considered a moisture mode, the mode must be obeyed the weak temperature, the weak temperature gradient balance. This leads to the following balance, a balance between adiabatic cooling and adiabatic, adiabatic heating, so, which in fact is the, the leading balance over the tropics. So this criteria can also apply here by constructing this scatter plot. Well, in this case, in the x-axis, we are plotting the divergent of color dry static, which means we are all, which means which are considered not only vertical advection, but also horizontal affection in their calculation. Yes. Uh, Victor, are these somewhat overlapping or entirely overlapping? I mean, I, I'm trying to, I don't know a, a lot about this, but if you have adiabatic cooling in a region where you don't have moisture, you're not going to have the compensating diabatic heating. So, of course, they'd have to be coincident. Is that a reasonable way to think about this, or am I off the track? Yeah, this is, this is okay. Yeah, this is good. So these are not necessarily independent criteria. They're just a set of criteria that may have overlap amongst them. Yeah, well, we propose a tricky criteria, but in this case, I think this criteria is the most important and the most, okay. the most strict criteria to identify most modes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So as I said, uh, well, in the x-axis, I plotted uh, well this term, the uh, vertical tri-static uh, energy, and the y-axis is the Q1. So well, obviously Q1 and Q are well. Uh, calculated from the contribution of the radiated heat and convective heat following Janai and Johnson 1993. Okay, if you look up here in the scatter plot, you can see a strong correlation between these two terms. 
And the most important as well, this linear fitting is almost one, which means this relation or this relation is true for our disturbances. And we can, yeah. Uh, just, just a clarification question. So you showed, you did a, you did a eigenvalue decomposition of the brightness temperatures, and then you showed the circuit, the 200 millibar winds. And now you're looking at at divergence of those winds. Where are the winds coming from? Uh, uh, well, the analysis. Are yeah, you, uh, yeah. And how did you project the reanalysis on that, on those eigenvalues? Yeah, you basically, uh, you have the, well, well, you can compute with a PC1 or a PC2. Well, in this case, we use the uh, linear regression to, to add, well, in this case, to compare with, uh, okay. with the circulation. Okay. You don't get the, okay. Yeah. But it, the winds are coming from the real analysis. Yeah, the winds come from, from the real analysis, yeah, of course. Okay, the first criteria is that the thermodynamic variation in a mode uh, must be dominated by moisture. This means that if your if your wave is a moisture mode, that well, the moisture energy must be the main contributor to the total uh, well uh, moist static energy. So we also we computed this. Uh, we applied this criteria by constructed this scatter plot, but in this case, in the x-axis, the column MC, and the y-axis is the column moisture energy. So from the scatter plot, you can see, again, a strong correlation, and the most important, the slope is almost one, which means that almost all, well, the, uh, the work, in this case, the, almost all the MC, uh, MC in fact, is explained by this, uh, well, moisture energy. Okay, so, of course, we propose the three criterias. Apparently, uh, our disturbance is satisfying the three criterias proposed here, but someone, in fact, can say that three criteria is not enough to say if some disturbance is or not a moisture mode. So, for this reason, we propose it here to additional criteria, basically to make sure that our disturbance is a moisture mode. So the first criteria uses the definition of the n-mode parameter. This n-mode is a non-dimensional parameter that measures the relative contribution of moisture and temperature in the moist enthalpy evolution. So if the body of this n-mode is much larger than one, we can say that our disturbance is a gravity wave. If the body of this n-mode is close to one, we can say that our disturbances have characteristic of mixed mode moisture gravity wave. And if the end mode is much less than one, we can say that our disturbance is in fact a moisture mode, or moisture drives the thermodynamics of these disturbances. Okay, this, uh, well, this end mode can be easily estimated by the following expression. So in this case, for instance, I'm showing the vertical profile of temperature energy and moisture energy from for two Radisson stations over the tropical region. And here, red means temperature energy, and blue means moisture energy. So if you compute uh, this column integrated moisture and temperature anomalies, you will obtain an end mode value of 0 0.1. Well, in this case, in fact, our disturbance is a moisture mode uh, while considering the end mode parameter. So uh, more, a, more, a more strict definition of this end mode is given by the following equation. It will explain in detail in Adamus 2019 and Adamus 2022, where uh, the CP in this equation is the phase speed of uh, the phase speed of your disturbance. C is the dry phase, uh, the phase speed of the dry gravity wave. Tau is uh, well the temporal time scale, and tau C in this equation is, well, the convective moisture adjustment time scale. So all of this, uh, well, of this parameter can be estimated from observation. So if you consider all of these values for this parameter, and well, in this equation, you can obtain a value in mode of 0 0.1. So again, we can say 
that our disturbances is in fact satisfy this ML parameter to be considered a most mode. All right, so the final criterion is also based in the definition of the effective gross moist stability. And according to recent well moisture mode theories, there are two important parameters for the instability of moisture modes. The first one is the, the GMS, the second one is the chlor radiation feedback parameter, which also is important for instance for the maintenance of the Julian oscillation. And the third parameter is the effect GMS. Basically, this effective GMS measure the GMS that also includes the impact of the globe radiation in the well, in this case, on the moisture modes. So each parameter can be computed below in this equation. Well, the GMS, well, in this case, the vertical GMS can be obtained by uh, normalizing the vertical, uh, the vertical MC addiction by the amount of convection represented by this term. And the clone radiation feedback can be estimated following up this, this equation by normalizing column radiative heating by the amount of convection. And effective is basically the difference between these, these terms. And to be considered a moisture mode, the value of this effective GMS must be negative or close to zero. So, well, in the observation, these terms can be estimated by using again the scatter plot, where the slope of this linear fitting represents the average value for this, for this parameter. So here you can see that the value for the column radiation for our disturbances is larger compared to this vertical GMS, which in fact gives us a negative value for the effective GMS, and we can see that our disturbances also satisfy this criteria. So our result is in fact in agreement with previous results from Inno et al. 2020, 2020, sorry. And where also the authors well found a strong value for the flow radiation feedback associated in this case to our disturbances compared to the vertical DMS, which give us a negative value for the effective units. This this uh, this diagram is very interesting because according to this diagram, well this is a space-time diagram, well westward propagating disturbances uh, have more chances to be a moisture mode compared to the is what propagating ones. Of course, we demonstrated that water and Rosby wave or Rosby light mode is in fact a moisture mode. Uh, well, esterly waves, well, Rosa will show us, uh, well, the next seminar, that in fact, esterly waves over the Pacific region located in this part of the diagram also is a moisture mode. In the other part of the diagram, only the marine Julian oscillation has some chances to be a moisture mode, and apparently it's a moisture mode only over the warm pool rain. All right, okay, so we demonstrated that our disturbances is in fact a moisture mode, or we are, uh, well, a 99% that our disturbances is a moisture mode. Well, in this part, we basically explore which processes control the growth and propagation of the interseasonal waste were propagating mode. Well, in this case, our analysis is based on this most static energy budget. Okay, as I said, uh, well, moisture energy governs the MC uh, distribution. Uh, the MC is highly correlated with convection, as also said here in this time longitude diagram, where this shade represents <coughs> convection, and the contour here represents the column. MC. You can see here basically that, well, convection and MC evolves almost in phase as the wave propagate over this, over this area. So, therefore, we can use, uh, well, the column MC budget, where the, this term represents the MC tendency. These two first uh, terms represent the advective terms. This is the horizontal and vertical uh, advection. MC advection, and the remaining terms are, I'll have to call it the source terms, composed by the column radiative heat and surface fluxes. Okay, I'm going to start showing first the advective terms, 
The first plot is the, uh, well, the MC tendency. The second is the, well, the horizontal affection, and the third panel represents the vertical affection. Uh, well, in all planets, in, in all panels, uh, sorry, uh, the shade represents the value of each parameter, and the contour represents the cone in C. Probably, uh, the most important point to start out here is that the horizontal affection is the largest term contributor to the total MC. Well, not much contributor here. It's observed, contributions observed from the vertical MC affection. Now, if you go to the source terms, again, here is the total MC tendency. This is the column of radiative heating, and this is the surface flux. Uh, and here, probably the most important point to set out is that the column radiative uh, radiate heating is the second largest thing contributor to the total tendency. And also, you can see that, well, this term and column MC evolves almost in phase, which means, uh, well, which give us some clues that this term is in fact uh, responsible for the maintenance of these disturbances. If you go to the surface flexes, well, not much contribution is observed from this term, and also showing an opposite uh, well, contribution compared to the column radiating terms. All right, so considering that the horizontal affection is the largest term contributor to the MC tendency, we parted the composite this term. Well, in this case, I'm, uh, I'm only showing for the sonar component. Where here the bar represents the low frequency or the mean or the seasonal mean, and the primes here represent the interseasonal component. Uh, well, here in this plot is the total horizontal affection, and all well, these plots are showing basically each term of the decomposition. Okay, so probably the most important point is that out here is that this term. Well, the horizontal affection of the interseasonal MC by the sonar mean is almost responsible for the total anomalies observed here in the, uh, well, in the horizontal affection of this term. And probably this term is responsible for the westward propagating of our disturbances. Well, if we want to answer this question, uh, there is a more objective way to calculate which terms are responsible for the propagation and maintenance of these disturbances. In this case, by projecting each value term, well, in this case, to know which terms are responsible for propagation, to the total tendency. Okay, doing that, we can see it here, well, the projection of these value terms, and in fact, we can confirm that our westward propagating wave propagate well, in that direction due to, uh, well, to the sonal, well, MC uh, advection by the mean pole. Well, not much contribution of other terms is observed for this term. Well, the same could be done, uh, well, to know who terms are responsible for the, for the maintenance of these disturbances. Well, in this case, each value term is projected, uh, well, to the column MC. Well, if you do that, you can see that our disturbances is maintaining basically uh, due to the radiative heating and due to the meridional moisture addiction. Well, negative contribution or term that contributes to the decay of these of these disturbances is composed by the vertical addiction uh, first and the surface flux. This is very interesting because if you go to the Manning Julian oscillation, the surface flexes also plays an important role uh, in the maintenance of the Manning Julian oscillation. Well, in this case, it's basically playing a negative, well, a negative contribution. All right, the final point of our work was, in fact, to reproduce the main observed feature of our disturbances, but in this case, by using the quadrant beta planet model. So, up to this point, I hopefully convinced you that uh, our whistler propagating mode is a uh, moisture mode. 
in consequence, it's more useful to have a model and that accounts for the for the role of the water vapor in the thermodynamics and dynamics of these disturbances. So for the reason we use it here, the Quattral uh, Beta Planet uh, model, which a prognostic equation for moisture. Not that way as commonly well tropical dynamics models deals with moisture, basically truncated out in their equation in this term. So the prognostic equation uh, for moisture is given by the following expression. Uh, well, more details about this model uh, can be found in 2021. 20, uh, I just want to mention here that the only difference from the original model is the inclusion of this term in this model. As you probably remember, this term is almost entirely responsible for the whisper propagation of our disturbance. All right, as I said, we use it basically the, this model for a qualitative comparison purpose. And here I'm showing the horizontal structure of the theoretical, the theoretical Rossby, Rossby wave. Well, in this plot, shading represents moisture, and the precipitation is represented here by contours. Solid mean positive anomalies and dashed mean negative anomalies. And the winds in this case is plotted by vectors. And here, an important point to mention is that the theoretical structure closely resembles to which was observed at, uh, to observe it in the westward propagating mode. For instance, in the theoretical structure, you can see the off quadrant gyres as much as detected with our analysis data. In the observation, uh, we also observe that convection of these gyres is almost in quadrature. And if you look up here, precipitation and the gyres is all this uh, in quadrature, in quadrature as well. And so it doesn't look like there's two gyres though, right? Yeah, this, yeah there are two gyres. Yeah. Yeah. So. But they're not like on the other sides of the equator? Uh, the, the sort of gyre structure looks pretty different in the right? Did you say the model or? On the right and the left. Yeah, did you, uh, well, yeah, I think because we are considering about uh, as small as the domain compared to the, to the observation. Well, it doesn't look like a quadruple. That's your point, right? It doesn't look like a quadruple. Uh, yeah, on the right, yeah. it looks like you have a gyre going one direction north of the equator and the direction south of the equator. Uh -huh. um, yeah, this is precipitation. Oh, is it maybe just different shading? Yeah, yeah. Like there's what what the dashed means is versus the solid is different on the left than on the right? Is that? Yeah, yeah. Because this is moisture anomalies. Well, red is positive anomalies. Yeah, I was thinking of the, the solid. The gray lines there. Yeah, so we need to hear also uh, positive, uh, positive anomalies in precipitation. The, the gray lines, right, are. Yeah, precipitation. I think the winds. It is a quadruple. Yeah, yeah. Winds, uh, it is a quadruple. Yeah. It is. If you look at the winds, they're. Yeah, yeah. yeah, basically, this yard is over here, precipitation is over here, and the other yard. Yeah, obviously it's not, it's not, uh, well, it's not perfect at all. <laughs> yeah, good. sorry, I just got confused because there's solid lines and dashed lines on the right. Like there's a solid line north of the equator and a dashed line south of the equator. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the left, there's solid lines north of the equator and south of the equator. It's fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because but I that's, that's just different notation. That's for different things that you're showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. No, don't worry. Okay, uh, well, the MC budget uh, for the theoretical, theoretical Rossi wave can also be computed and, and also can be projected to basically to get the, the main terms responsible for the propagation and maintenance of the theoretical Rossi wave. As in observation, the theoretical Rossi wave maintain, uh, well, in this case, propagate westward due to uh, the zonal 
moisture detection by the new flow. It's observed here. This is for the model. And it's maintained by the, well, what I call radiation heating. And uh, well, this is a very normal moisture detection. As I said, the model is it's not perfect. There are some difference between uh, well observation and, and the theory. But in general, we can see that this equatorial moisture beta planet model uh, reproduce our interest in wastewater propagation over the Western Hemisphere. Okay, so I just put uh, the main conclusions in this slide. We basically demonstrate that the wastewater propagating mode is playing a large fraction of the interstitial variability over the Western Hemisphere. Well, we propose a different criteria to demonstrate that, in fact, our disturbance is a moisture mode. Uh, well, in observation in the model, we basically observe that the way propagate wastewater due to the zonal moisture detection by the new flow and is maintained by the radiative heating and the meridon meridional moisture detection. And probably uh, the most important conclusion of this work was that we, in fact, need to move away to the dry shallow theory if you want to understand a uh, well slow convective coupled tropical system. All right? Thank you so much.
Yeah. So you're arguing it's it's noise potentially is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to follow the arguments about the Matsuno Gale model. Is this our? I haven't read the Ahmed 2021 paper. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to argue that this mode is not in the Matsuno Gale model, that it's a separate mode? Kind of the way a moisture, a moisture like the way that the MJO would be, there's a separate dispersion relation? Or are you arguing, like I guess I didn't quite follow that? Yeah, I think this model is, uh, because the Matsuno Gale is a simplification, you know. Sure. Uh, but here there are a lot of terms we probably is not considered that in the original Matsuno Gale theory. So you're not arguing that it's just a recasting of the Matsuno Gill in terms of moisture? You're no. arguing it's a really yeah. truly separate mode from yeah. anything that shows up in the Matsuno Gill? Yep, yep, yep. yep. Okay. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Could you comment, Victor, on the uh, the lack of a role for either a maintenance or propagation of the vertical motion term mm -hmm. in light of the fact that you wouldn't even have precipitation anomalies without it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, and this is undoubtedly a naive question. I don't know anything about the tropics, but I find it really interesting that omega DMDP has nothing to do with propagation or maintenance, and yet it's what leaves the trail of precipitation, which yeah. alerts you to the presence of the mode in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, for these instruments as well, vertical elevation doesn't like probably there are some. Well, I think there is a lot of residual in the reanalysis. Mm -hmm. I think we consider probably a, basically like vertical elevation is not well represented in the, the reanalysis. Okay. And it's responsible for that strong residual observing in the well in the well in the propagation and making. So John, there's there's variations in the amount of vertical reduction. It's just that they're correlated with um, the structure of the mode. Uh, it doesn't help me. I'm sorry, that, but that's my my lack of understanding. Can I ask a follow-up question that might help yeah, me bridge yeah. a gap? Where does the where does the omega come from? Because omega prime is the same as omega. There's no such thing as average omega. Yeah, all of that comes from Reynolds. I mean, uh, I mean, in physics, in the physical world, is it just from convergence at the surface? Is that the only place you get it? There's no other things that drive vertical motion. Huh? Blade heating is driving the vertical motion. But not the initial vertical motion. Because there's no latent heating unless you have condensation. So how do you get it going? Well, that would be sort of what is the instability of the Yeah, I guess so maybe that's what I'm asking. Does anybody know that yet or is it too new? Okay, I, I don't mean to clog up the questions. I'm interested in this. It's really great work and it's very interesting and I'm trying to learn more about the tropics when I come to all these talks. I'm learning a little bit yeah. and you're helping me. So, thanks. Yes. Uh, thanks for this talk. It's very interesting. I'm, what I'm wondering is how does topography affect this? As it moves, you would expect um, topographical features like the Andes Mountains to just take all yeah. the moisture out of the flow. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the topography I think uh, it has a lot of uh, impact on basically these disturbances, uh, and we we found a lot of uh, well problems. We, for instance, we want to analyze uh, eastward propagating disturbances such as Kelvin wave because the the Andes well, well acts like a, a barrier to these disturbances, and these disturbances, for instance, in some cases need to move. Water. Well, in order one first, and then to go back to the, the tropical region. In fact, the, 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 well, the Andes plays an important role. This is some reason, for instance, we have different, well, a lot of receivable in this calculation, whether well, or not it's not well represents uh, what's going on over this region. So, yeah, in fact, there are many contributions of the power. Yes. Um, okay, so my understanding of how uh, like ENSO evolves forward is that in the ocean there's uh, eastward propagating Kelvin waves and then westward, westward propagating equatorial Rossby waves. Yep. Do you think that either there's a relationship between these atmospheric waves or that like it's an atmospheric equivalent to it? Uh, probably there is not much relationship between the ocean and, well, in this case, because the wave is propagating over the Atlantic region, for and mm -hmm. over the land region, so 
good time. Probably on the Yeah, for all of me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need to check the digitality. So maybe this would just look like, you know, the kind of MJO model that, that, yeah. uh, that, that yeah. uh, I helped came up with, except that there would be this term. Is that right? And that term would be? Um, just this, this, this term? Uh, the, the, the red term. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm yeah. just wondering how the equation is different than like, what you would see like for the MJO. Uh -huh. Well, um, as I said, I don't have okay. to do the model. I need to check uh, how exactly I have to uh, modify the original model to have our work. Basically, to reproduce our work, which is not what you Okay. Okay. More questions? Thank you.